and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you guys live coverage from the uh, Quanatic Summer Battle. Myself, Menace, alongside Pansy, are going to be joining the Dobra versus Western Wolves game as they are played out on City Streets. And it uh, looks like it is actually getting done pretty close here. The first half has actually finished, and we are joining in on the second half after completing our previous game. But either way, that is 7 5 in favor of. I'm not sure if that score's updated. It hasn't. Okay, so Western Wolves are currently two rounds in the lead um, as they sit 7-5 and move on to the attacking side. So to get that two-round uh, advantage on defense, let me just get uh, everyone in the game before I get shot up for that. But, uh, so, looking off your list, take a quick little look and see what uh, Winky's doing. Actually, a quick little roster rundown before we start. For Western Wolves, we've got Ono, Fantasy, Froz, Chibi Meissen, and then for Dobro, we've got Stork, Starak, Winky, Zo, and Baggy. And uh, now it is all down to the Dobro guys to try and close off this gap. The upper screen lies to me, the attacking side actually having the lead at the moment. We do see Meissen going down to the hands of Stork. A very strong Dobro side Explosive so far. Bomb stranded. has gone down over at B, and I don't think Dobro expected that at the least. They're not even in any position to deny the bomb plant. We do have Baggy pushing in from the top of the street. Frost sitting down towards the lower end of the street as uh, Baggy moves forward. Oh, he does get spotted though. Chibi lays down some covering fire. He has spotted one just off to his left hand side in front of him. Wesson was on actually near that bomb at the moment. Oh, Baggy takes out Frost, and this is not good. Chibi's the last man standing. One goes down. Bombs. Oh, so much fire. Chibi's heavily tagged. 15 seconds. Chibi actually is in a very peculiar predicament. No, where is Baggy looking? Baggy, what are you doing? Watch towards mid. Oh, and there's not enough time. And Chibi's just going to run in here and get that final frag to push it to 8-5 and increase that score by three rounds. Or make the, the, the difference are three rounds, but that is just really wow. Yeah, I don't know what Baggy was doing there. That, that seemed like a little bit of a mistake on his behalf, but I'm going to pick it up with Chibi now with a nice A spawn. I'm going to wonder if they use it. Um, obviously, we saw the B push last time, but let's see if they can switch it up. And obviously, Chibi feeling quite aggressive here. Let me punish for that, avenging that last round's mistake. Baggy does drop their nade onto Chibi's face, and now still does make his way through mid market, darts back around to A arch. See if you can cover off the impending forces of the Western Wolf side. Now, guys, make sure you retweet what I just put on Twitter, by the way. Tweet it yourself. Get it out there. This game deserves a good watch because DeBro are putting up a little bit of a uh, stand so far. Now, Winky dropping down on oh, the opposing scope from the Western Wolf side. Can they keep up this pace? Because Western Wolves are truly on the back foot now. With three players standing to the five of the DeBro side. This could be the round that uh, DeBro do just need. But Froz dropping down Winky. And now you can see Starek and Stilk on the push around the back. If they're feeling aggressive yet, Fantasy is a little bit aware of this and he's trying to rope around the back to get the two kills here. Let's see if he can do it. Let's see if he can outgame both of these SMGs. I'll be curious if he pulls it off and looks to the right. Here we go. Drops out an A to the arch. He's got to be careful. This player is literally just to his right. If he. Oh! Fantasy! You'd, if you looked another centimeter, you'd have had him. But there we go. Still does manage to pull off that frag and the bomb does get baked and I think dropped by Baggy there. That was pretty mice on that site and now it's all on Frost. Te <laughs> tell a lie. Frost was on the bomb site but he gets taken out by Zoe and that A push really got held in its place by Dobro there. Even with the you know, fancy re-rotating re round the back, he completely fluffed it by not quite checking all his corners. So uh, there we go. It's being brought ever closer back to being one of those really close-knit games. Definitely so. It seems that all these teams here at at the event have been doing some other form of surprise, I mean, especially seeing ESPC versus Arianus this morning and a couple of the other games, but this one again is just something so close. Honor with a superb shot onto Staric to open up that round. Froz with a nade to follow right up, still going down. There's no one actually on that, uh, sorry, on the B side. Chibi's going to be calling that side of his team and be like, guys, just, just come here, like, seriously, just get the bomb down. Winky having a save out though over on the A side as he takes out two players, Nate and Eagle. Uh, Chibi getting himself a frag there onto Zoe. Looks like he'll be able to secure, secure off the top end of that street. Of course, with Winky still alive, he will definitely be worried and is not peeking out too much. Oh, but does peek up to take out Baggy, who was in front of him. Last man is scoped. Can Chibi get himself that hat trick? Unfortunately not. Winky now, last man standing one versus two. Has been spotted by Honor, but Frost is going to be the one to close them off and push it to a three, or sorry, keep that three round difference as Western Wolves now sit on a 9 6 scoreline. 
Yeah, and I, I must say, it's nice to see Ono actually really waking up at the moment. He seemed quite quiet compared to his usual self in the last few games I've seen of him, but he seems to be back up towards the top of that scoreboard, and he's going for quite the aggressive peek here on top of the barrels. How unorthodox. I've never seen anyone do that before, but it's a very quick peek to mid, just to see if anyone drops down with that SMG or pushes market through that kind of manner. But here we go. We're stopped now on the attack towards B. Chubi dropping down into market. The other forces more towards the wooden and zigzag area. So now Chubi pushing through to try and cut the defensive side in half, literally. It's now up the mid stairs. Action kicking off at B. Staric taking down Meissen, who's really quiet this game. Only, only 5 to 12. Not doing as well as before, but Chubi now going to be spotting a player towards mid. That was Winky, but not for long as that SMG fire really puts him down to size. So now the rotate, I believe, is actually coming out from Western Wall. So they look like they're going for such a strong B, but now they seem more comfortable towards A. It's so maybe because they took out that scope player and they're feeling comfortable with the range. So now Chubi pushing around to A arch and he spotted a player towards the top of the arch there, but still takes down Ono. And now Western Wall's not looking so strong because Silk takes one, takes two. Hat trick for Silk. Fancy clawing it back, trying his very best, but Baggy dropping down now. Zoe finishes him off. But what a round from Silk there, really stopping that rotate from B to A. And wow, he really just saves it, saved his team that, that round. Starting on 17 frags at the moment for his team. He is the top fragger in the server at the moment. Has a massive difference above anyone else. Now I'm going to keep an eye on him and see what he actually does this round. As he drops his way into mid. Actually going for a fast rush through mid. Should be able to pick up the top of a couple of frags. Takes up the first one. There is a second one that just ran past. Throws a nade out towards the car park. Oh, but he's actually just forced Western Wolves back into their spawn or to completely just stay away from his position. Nade did come in and that's going to force him away. Heavily tagged up. He doesn't want to stay in that fight much longer. And, uh, you now see Staric actually moving up into wood and just casually strolling around the back. Takes out Fantasy. And at the moment, Western Wolves are so split apart. Not a single Dobro player has actually gone down yet. So, uh... Definitely looking good for them at the moment. Finally, Staric does go down to the Deagle of Ono as uh, Ono gets himself another one, but still takes him down. And ooh, as he throws out the flash, Meissen just jumps around the corner. Meissen, the one we've seen him countless times so far at this event, is really coming up big for his team. Takes out Winky. I need Baggy left to go. And this is the thing, he's made noise at the top of the street. Now does he go back towards B, expecting the player to be here? Or does he rotate back to A, and then just hope that he doesn't caught back in the rotate? Seems like he is expecting the player to be here over on B, and moving his way so, although Baggy with that AK gets the superior damage advantage, and of course being behind that wall gives him that extra bit of cover, and that'll mean the dropper can bring it back. It's only a one round difference. Indeed, and Dobro seem to be waking up now. Those first few rounds kind of stunned them, it almost seemed. But they seem to be really adapting to what Western Wolves are doing. And Winky now going for the onto mid. Takes down one, but avenged rather swiftly by Ono. Get the shot. He did get the shot off actually onto Chubi there at the start. And but now, do you think that's worth it? Down. Did you actually trade a scope for an SMG? Well, it depends. You know, a, a lot of... Um, you know, Ono has, has always struggled almost on this map. I, I know Kex, when I used to play an Infuse, was always very comfortable to peek him and... Obviously, you know, depending on how you play, but still here actually did push up mid, get a quick plus 10 on Fancy and Frost. This man is not even fussed about the fact he's playing Western Wolves. But um, the fact is, it depends how you want to play. And obviously, you know, if you take down someone who's got the front spawn, who's on an aggressive push, who could really make all the odds through mid, then it's worth it because Chibi can really make the impact through obviously the mid market and taking down the scope or someone else. So it depends who you're playing against in their play style. If you're aggressive enough and if you're confident enough to take down Ono, then go for it. But uh, it obviously depends. Now Ono in a 1v2. Bomb loose on the stairs. Ono on the push. But he can't get too far. Kostarik's there. And the score is all even, folks. It's been brought back from the absolute brink of almost depression from the Dobro side. And now 9-9. Yeah, it really is something quite close at the moment. Now let's uh, actually have let's have a look. See, see what Winky is up to. See if he can maybe pull off the exact same again. Going to go for the jump. Nothing is there. And uh, luckily Ono is not looking for his number either. So he'll come off scot-free from that one. But uh, unfortunately, his teammate Stilk, the man who's been hitting up the spear um, in the Dobro side, has gone down to an early nade. Winky taking up Fantasy though, so pretty equal trade there. And uh, Staric onto Ono, oh, wow. Dobro really just shining through at the moment. We do have Chief trying to push up there onto Fences, although it does get taken up by Zoe's Deagle. Winky going down to Meissen's AK. Uh, Dobro with a man advantage. I take that back. Froz has taken out Staric, but once again, Zoe just goes for the reply. And that revenge style playing really works. As soon as you've got that one-man advantage, just make sure that every single one of your players is covered and it's all good to go. Meissen, one versus one. Oh, well, it wasn't a one versus two. Can he win this one, though? And once again, just making the massive difference for his team. Now, he was at the bottom of the street. Could rotate all the way back towards A or linger around B once more. And uh, just try and find that player. 
Looks like he's unsure of where to go at the moment. So, uh, is he going to be making his way towards A? I believe so. Kind of just flicking back, making sure his back is covered. Drops into mid. As he makes his way over to the arch. Where is Baggy? He didn't actually look into mid and just missed Myson going there. Bomber's going to go down here in a second. Does Baggy hear it? Yes, he does. He's going to have to make his move now. He's deciding to Explosive go for car park. The bomb isn't planted for car park, and Myson is moving up in towards mid. And this is one of those flaws because Myson literally had choice to plant on any side of the bomb, and it was pure luck that he actually planted on that side of the bomb. Because now Myson sits on a close range position at the top of the street. Baggy's going to try and clear out car park first, make his way all the way through to the bomb, see where the bomb's planted, realize where Myson is, and then have to try and clear out the uh, the area there by the gardens. Now Myson has heard some action. And I believe he has actually heard the player going up towards his left-hand side. Only 40 seconds left on the clock. Oh, and Baggy just jumps out right in front of Myson. Myson easily picks up that frag, meaning he pulls off that one versus two clutch for his team to bring them that one round into the lead. Yeah, and, and it seemed almost unlucky that um, you know, Baggy looked the wrong way. But uh, picked up here with Ono the scope for the attacking side, which is Western Wolves, who are currently one one round in the lead. But it's a close game nevertheless, so Nate's already hindering where he wants to go, but he makes his way towards B quite aggressively. There will be two players making his way down towards him. He's got to be careful, because that's an SMG right in his face. And he needs some help from his teammates, who just died out, wouldn't it? was fantasy, but not for long. He gets to get the first frag onto Stilk, but Starrick replies, and Winky drops a nade onto Mice and Tubi, and Froz racking up one each, but Froz actually dropping his own teammate. He was just, he just felt like it. He thought, you know, I don't even like you anymore, Tubi. Tubi's been hated so much down. already. Exactly. <laughs> Tubi is uh, enemy number one. Ono now on the prowl towards B Arch. There is a player just to the right side. Cool, karma collected. Ono doesn't go for the shot, but he does now rattle off a couple onto Zobi. He does get the shot nicely there with a little double tap with the bullets now dropping out of smoke to just help out his teammate Froz, maybe pull out some of the players, bring him closer to assume the bomb plant is going down, he's doing just that, and now Froz gets the first frag onto Baggy, opening up the run towards A, and they are sprinting their little legs off on a quick peek to mid, just to see if he'd seen anyone running across that catwalk yet, and uh, maybe going in for the second look here, because that player probably is going to be towards the arch, and he is actually there now. Froz awaiting his moment, because he knows he's probably there as well, and here we go, Winky is going to a world of trouble, both players coming in the pincer moon, and Ono gets the frag, that was really nicely worked between Froz and Ono there, just pushing together, really helping each other out, and obviously everything they did, they did in absolute perfect sync. So now you can see Western Wolves really deserving the lead they're getting themselves into. Oh, definitely, so that was really well played from them. Of course, now the two-round lead is just building on the morales, the momentum that Western Wolves now have, and it's going to go push forward and close this one off. Going to take it away here with Starik as he tries to push over towards the B-side. chibi has gone down early on. Seems that he's either been caught off by early nades or killed by his teammates. Seems to be the unloved one this game. But it's okay because the community still loves him. Now we do have Fantasy taking out Zoe, evening up the teams once more as Starek makes his way up on the B side. It looks like it's a kind of Western Wolves mid towards A play. They still have every opportunity to rotate towards B. They really have that neutral positioning at the moment. You see Fantasy pushing up the stairs. Here comes under heavy fire. Unfortunately, under puts a close up frag. Baggy gets it. Frost gets a reply to Stilk though, which for them is a big one. And now. With only a one player advantage, Dorb will make the hold. Fraz moves up onto the bomb. He knows there's a player towards the top of the stairs, and he's going to try and push that. Baggy takes up Myson. Oh, spots Fraz, but not quick enough. And Winky with a shot in from mid takes out Fraz to bring it back to 11 10. Only one round difference. Now, Dobra need every single round from here on to win it, or l at least the next two to tie, whereas Western Wolves only need two more to win it, and there's three available to them. Yeah, and I'm gonna see. I'm curious to see how Western Wolves players went out. They seem to be going for this mid to B kind of push once again, um, and obviously they're they're focusing towards B alley. And you can see the players getting through. So maybe the nades really aren't hindering them as much as they should be. Just fancy and Chubby alongside each other, making their way out towards this B side. Froz dropping the nade onto Zoe early on, giving the player advantage straight away to Western Wolves. Fancy peeking out towards that ice cream van, not managing to see anyone, but he's aware there's players close and. They'll be nearby. Smoke's blooming out onto B and the push is coming on thick and fast. No one dropping as yet. Still does drop down. Mice and Fancy avenging him with the frag onto Starek. Winky will one for himself. Froze with the reply. Tit for Tat so far. Western Wolves still with a player advantage though. So Stilk and Winky with a hell of a lot of work to do. See if they can do it. I can imagine that's Winky and Biosh just coming under a hell of a fire. But he does take down one player but then dropped in revenge. 
Now Winky actually still alive. Um, excuse me, it was actually uh, his teammate that got dropped by Arno. But he's in a world of trouble. And here we are. Fancy gets the frag onto Winky. He was really pinned in there. And it seems the Western Walls are brilliant at doing that, actually. They're really good at working together to get that frag that they desperately need. It's, it's not um, you know, it's not an individual player that's shining. Yeah, they, they don't mind sacrificing themselves for the frag. Yeah, frying. exactly. Now, uh, one of the things I did notice that was very interesting, probably not too big, but still something that could have made a massive difference in the overall outcome of that one. Froz had bomb and actually tried to climb onto the top of the B arch to get the to get Winky in B. That's one of those things. Jumping onto that arch, you make quite a bit of noise. And if Winky had known and gotten that frag, you can only imagine with the bomb stuck on top of the arch. It would have been such a mission for Western Wolves to try and get that bomb back. Either way, though, we do see Western Wolves standing strong this round, and they haven't got the man at the lead at the moment. We're only 30 seconds into the round. Winky is your last man standing, and can he come up clutch to try and even this one out for his team? There's only a chance of a draw at the moment, so it needs to try his very best. He's making his way down the side, but unfortunately not. Western Wolves clinch at 13-10 to take the game, which means they just get themselves another win on the in the group stages at the moment. I believe that was round four or five, and of course we'll be seeing more action of them later on. If not tomorrow, of course, to make it into the playoffs. Either way, the guys, for now, that was myself, Menace, and Pansy, bringing you guys live coverage from the Quinatic Summer Battle. Please do follow us on Twitter. I'm at Menace. Alongside me, I've got at They Call Me Pansy. Go check her out, too. Anyway, we're going to be right back with more coverage. We're just going to get a, try and get the next game up, and then we'll see you guys soon.